Hello and good morning or good evening wherever you are. This is uh, going to be about joints and IK handles. It's pretty simple really, but it's quite complex as well. Uh, a question I often get is why do we need bones after all? And that's a good question. Uh, and uh, let me just introduce a polygon cube here in the center of the scene. And I give it some more subdivisions that will do. And in the Lambert shader, I give it more transparency so we can sort of look through it a little bit. Now I go to rigging here. You can go to rigging here as well and have everything in the um, in the menu here. But I have the icons here, and this is the icon to create joints. Uh, we create one joint here, one joint here, and one joint here, for example. And uh, here it is. If we want to animate this uh, brick, so it behaves like a knee, for example, a leg, and this would be the knee, we would have to go into things like, well, vertex would be not bad. And then, wait a minute, I don't want to, a height hide the joint for a second. Actually I can do it here. That's a good thing to do. Uh, joints there. They're gone now. They're s still in the scene. They're not hidden. If they would be renderable they would be rendered alright. So sorry for that interruption. Um, we go here and then we want to rotate. Imagine this is the knee here. So how do we do it? Like this? Ooh, looks horrible. And you have to move it down. And here you can see already a problem, which uh, is, it's, uh, it doesn't relate to our bodies because this thing is stretched. It should not stretch really that far. This thing should stretch a little bit more. So you have to adjust many things and especially if you uh, think you need uh, a leg positioned or a foot positioned down here uh, you get a very strange knee. The, the knee is basically gone because of uh, all the things you did here. Uh, the elegant things about uh, joints is this. If you select the the master here, this is the this is the key. That's, that's the, it's a group actually. We have several joints here. One, two, three. That's all three of them. We need to pick the in the hierarchy the top uh, level node plus the cube in this case which is sort of a leg and uh, then we go to oh well we go to rigging and under skin we find bind skin and that's basically all we need to do now we have a skeleton built into that cube which deforms everything nicely and just to give you a hint don't use translation now. Tran translate this doesn't make sense. Stick to the rotation because the bones don't translate. Our uh, backbones or our elbows for example and uh, our hands don't stretch. They just rotate. The joints rotate. Here you see in this edge for example uh, little problems because this is a little bit too thin now. But uh, it can be easily fixed by painting the skin weights, as it's called, but we're not getting to this uh, today. So this is basically um, the reason why we um, insert bones and not deform the geometry as such. The, uh, it's a very elegant way to, and it's basically the only way to animate uh, vertebrae creatures. Let's create a new scene because I want to show you something very specific about bones and joints now. Let's go to the front view for example and choose the create joint tool and we'll create something which sort of looks like a finger. Oh by the way when you create uh, chains of joints you have to press enter in order to complete the operation. So Maya knows this is your last, uh, that's the end of uh, your chain. 
as I said before, you have a whole selection of uh, uh, joints here and they're all here under the section of joint one. Uh, you could call it finger and you could use a command which uh, changes the name of the sub bones uh, to finger one, finger two, etc. But let's not do this now. If you want the finger tip to reach somewhere down here, what do you do? I told you before, don't translate everything. If you could translate the bone so that the bone stretches, you would maybe pick this one and, or actually this one, and move it here. This is ridiculous because the top uh, part of the finger does not stretch. So this is not the way to go about this. Um, you can rotate the bones, of course, and when you start rotating this one, cursor down to check, uh, to select the next one in the hierarchy down here and down here and then you will reach the point you wanted to reach what I just did is I moved forward from here to here to here to here so um, uh, it's called forward kinematics it's an elegant way to ro uh, to rotate uh, individual joints and very powerful really but um, under many circumstances you just want to pick the front and move it to this point and uh, that's what we'll do in the next step and um, before we invoke the next step it's this one create an IK handle inverse kinematics uh, which is just uh, the contrary we have to make some provisions with the with our joints but before we invoke inverse kinematics will have to add some special features to this skeleton. Uh, I show you something which doesn't happen in nature. If this is our finger here, in nature you cannot rotate this uh, in this uh, direction. You can rotate it in this direction. Everything else looks odd. And like here, same thing. You don't rotate your middle finger or your, the central joint of your uh, middle finger uh, into uh, the uh, vertical uh, through the vertical axis for example so this is what we'll uh, determine now we will tell Maya this is a finger bone and you must not rotate it in any other direction but this one now look in the attribute editor look at this value here it changes when I rotate uh, the joint and this is X Y and Z and so the Z axis is the one I need and it's the same for this one this one this one uh, so first thing I'm doing is tell Maya the joint has certain degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom are in Z only so now having unchecked X and Y I cannot rotate it in the X and Y directions anymore I can only rotate it in this direction and that's the thing I wanted so let's go to the next one and do the same thing and the next one and do the same thing and the last joint doesn't matter here the first joint by the way can rotate like this it's ro the root of the hand for example so let's leave it there now we can add something else which is important for a hand bone or a finger bone you see that I can rotate this joint in this direction but this is totally un unnatural we cannot bend the finger up uh, but we can bend it down like sort of 90 degrees so let's set limits for this joint and the limits are further down limit information and here you have uh, in gray grayed out uh, the X and Y because we cannot rotate it in any way but this value is free so what we do now we set a limit in both rotation directions and the first limit is this wheel this is a stretched joint here from this it goes with straight line here so we move this well move we will copy this value 9.84 
into this section by clicking the arrow. So it's sitting there. What it did is this. I rotate it down, I rotate it up, and it doesn't go any further. That's actually what I wanted. Now I rotate it down, like 90 degrees, like in nature, and I copy this value, 82 minus 82 actually, there. So the whole rotation takes part only in this realm. I go to the next joint, do the same. The stretched finger would be here. So I move the value, I'll copy the value of 14.24 here. And I go 90 degrees, sort of, and this value walks in here. And now further down in the hierarchy, same thing, let's stretch the finger. That's 23, and now 90 degrees again. Let's check this, and we're done. The skeleton behaves like a natural skeleton now. In the perspective view, for example, let's pick this joint. We cannot rotate it in this axis. We cannot rotate it in this axis, but we can rotate it in this axis, and we can only rotate it within a certain limit, not any further than that and not any higher than this. So with this uh, arrangement we're basically ready to introduce inverse kinematics. It's this icon here, we create an IK handle and the IK handle tool wants us to pick a root like this and the end effector like this. And what we have now is a tool which lets us translate the whole chain so it reaches the fingertip reaches this area. So I just do this and see how wonderfully it moves and the whole chain adapts to that process. Um, I can move it over here, back and forth, so the finger stretches and if I move it to the very back nothing really bad happens because we set all the limitations to our skeletons and it behaves like it should. Inverse kinematics lets us uh, move the final part and Maya calculates all the bone rotations by itself.